I want to really get across is uh, helping women especially get, you know, the real answer is when they are on a copper IUD and they're having these symptoms and they're led to believe that, okay, well, let's do a blood test, let's see what's going on. Okay, blood test shows normal. No, it's not the copper IUD. Doctor says it's not the IUD. It's, it's, it's harmless. It's benign. What would you want to say to the women who are just finding out that maybe the copper IUD is affecting them? So many professionals aren't even aware of it, let alone the layperson. That means that so many uh, women need to transcend what their doctors and psychiatrists and psychologists and therapists know. Because most practitioners are stuck in a paradigm that doesn't even recognize the underlying mineral system, doesn't recognize the validity and uh, accuracy of HTMA data, and is really not interested in addressing uh, uh, these kind of advances in our understanding of uh, the mineral system as it regulates our physical and psychological function. So women, if they're going to get any real help, need to focus on educating themselves. And uh, unfortunately, the mineral system is very complex. Uh, it's very um, powerful in its effect. And to understand it takes a very uh, committed effort to understand it. Right. And it's not as simple as just, well, I heard copper and zinc are antagonistic. I'll take zinc and fix the problem. It's, it's nowhere near as, as simple as that. So coppertoxic.com has a lot of information. It's the number one resource uh, worldwide for copper toxicity research and support. Um, there's Dr. Malter's videos on there as well. Um, it's a very complex journey. And uh, unfortunately, it's, it's simplified by people who don't really understand it. Um, it it's, it's easy to say, well, you know, I just, just detox, just take some zinc, do mm -hmm. a blood test. Um, but there's a lot more involved than that. So if you really want to be addressing your body um, holistically, systemically, long term, um, I, I don't think that a blood test, relying on a blood test is the way to go. I mean, it can be supportive, but I think really the HTMA is where you need to start to at least determine um, you know, is there a copper toxicity problem or, or isn't there? Um, you know, a blood test can show you toxicity in the moment that copper is being mobilized, and if you happen to have the blood test at that time, great, it'll pick it up. But the problem is usually the blood test is done at a time when the blood is not, or when the copper is not being mobilized into the blood, and then people are led to believe that, okay, well, I don't have copper toxicity, or, well, I've improved because now my copper is back to normal, or my, my blood is, my blood copper is back to normal. But no, we're, that's ignoring everything that's happening at the cell and tissue level. So the HTMA test would be the, the smart place to start, uh, and, and really targeted nutritional support based on the HTMA data. That's a very good recommendation, and uh, has stood the test of time. Mm -hmm. um, what Eck and Watts uh, discovered back in uh, the 1970s and early 1980s has stood the test of time. And if anything, the copper toxic problem has become uh, much more expanded and epidemic. And uh, on your uh, coppertoxic.com website, you posted my uh, recent video about what I'm calling the copper toxic society. What happens to a society when approximately 80% are slow metabolizers uh, corresponding with copper toxicity and how that's affecting their physical and their brain and psychological functions with all kinds of implications. Totally baffling most of the professionals that they seek help from.